Hi, in this uh, video I'll talk about the basic concept of electric charges and field lines. Let's take a positive charge to start with, a simple positive charge which is radiating the charge all around it. Let's give it a red color and let it be a sphere. At every point you can see that the rays uh, getting emanated are positive to the surface area at that point. To represent it in a sketch, we could draw green arrows pointing outwards. The important thing here is that the charge lines must be radial if it's a closed volume and the charge line should be perpendicular to each and every area from which that line emanates. So in total, you will have rays all around if it's a ball. Let's look at a negative charge. Let's give it a blue color for the purpose of differentiation. Here too we see some kind of rays. The difference here is that the scientists agreed on a notation that the rays must point inwards towards the center of this ball and not coming outwards. So that's the way to differentiate between positive charges and negative charges. In positive charges, the charge lines point outward and away from the charge. And for negative charges, the charge lines are radial and point into the charge. So let's look at a typical physics problem of two point charges. Now we are not going into the fact that these two point charges could collide by electrostatic attraction and neutralize each other. Let's say they are kept apart by some means. So here we have a situation where the charge lines be coming out from that red ball and going into the blue ball. So the question is what would the net charge lines look like? They would of course be a mix of both of them. So that mix develops like this. Of course it happens instantaneously but let's say it happens very slowly and let's look at it in slow motion. The lines from the positive charge must of course be radially outward so they start out that way but then the lines for the negative charge must point radially inward towards the center of that blue ball. Therefore, you see a bend and all these rays are curved. And although they are curved, at the ends of that curve, you can see that each of those green lines is pointing uh, towards the center of those two spheres on the left hand side and at the right hand side where the arrow is pointing towards the center of that blue sphere. So it's certainly obeying that uh, two principles of being radial and as well as pointing the right way uh, concerning the centers of those two spheres. This is an animation which shows how those lines can develop. It's easy to remember the thing if you can look at this animation. The rays emanating from that positive charge and bending and going into the negative charge. And uh, what we see here is only in a single plane for ease of viewing and of course there will be myriad such lines all around 360 degrees about that axis that joins those uh, two charges. So this is how you draw the field lines for two point charges. Now if you look at uh, two positive point charges, that would be quite different. So on the left hand side you have uh, the positive point charge A and on the right hand side you have the positive point charge B. So of course uh, the charge lines would be radially moving out for each one of them. Uh, but as you bring them close to each other, you can see that there is a repelling action. So the rays, uh, I would call it rays or the field lines uh, that are coming out from each of these two charges, uh, they come near each other, they repel each other and the only way they can move is away from each other. So the rays are the field lines which are above the center line go upwards and those below the center line move downwards. So that's the only way they can move. This animation makes it more clear regarding the field lines which are above the center line joining those charges and regarding the field lines that are below the center line joining those two charges. And all other field lines will behave accordingly as a resultant of the charges acting on them. So that's why you see that the charges on the extreme left and the extreme right are just straight arrows because they are a little far away and there is no resultant direction imposed on them. 
and all other rays are kind of curved and bent. The interesting thing is what happens at the central zone. In the central zone, the line joining these two charges, you can see that the green arrow emanating from the left one and the green arrow emanating from the right one are meeting head on and they cancel each other's effect. So there is zero charge where these two arrows meet. So the field lines neutralize each other. That's why in this central zone, there is uh, no uh, electric uh, charge. I hope this was useful to you. Thanks and have a great day.